I want to say a prayer before we get started. Father God, I just come to you first and foremost, just to acknowledge who you are, thanking you for the only begotten of the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the reason that we are all gathered here. I ask, Lord, that as you get ready to minister the word tonight, I pray that you will go ahead of me, open up the ears of all that are listening, let them hear your voice, Lord Jesus, I pray. I pray, Father God, that you will open up their eyes and help them to see, visualize you and what we are talking about here tonight. And I pray, Father God, that you will give them a heart of flesh that they will understand and receive your word with full understanding, I pray. And I ask, Lord, bless your word for the nourishment of your people. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, I pray. Giving you thanks for all that you're going to do here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord, saints. We're going to talk about some of the basics here tonight. We want to, uh, God gave me a message that we're going to talk about uh, the gospel message. And before we really jump into it, I wanted to take the time and maybe just get a couple people um, that would just share with us, what is the gospel message to you? If someone were to uh, ask you, what is that message? What would you tell them? Anybody want to share their thoughts? Because it's important that we all have an understanding of what the gospel message is if we're going to tell somebody. No volunteers? Nobody wants to? I was trying. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, the gospel message for uh, to me is that Jesus died for our sin. And someone was to ask me why I serve a God that I can't see or touch. I tell them because he died for me that I might be saved. And no matter what is going on in the world, as long as I keep my eye on him, that he have made a provision for me. He's, he's interceding for me. And that the word is that God died. He loved us just that much that he died, that he gave his only begotten son that I will have and that they would have eternal life. That's right. That's, that's what I feel. That's all right. This is Mother Rosie. Yes. The gospel message to me is God is alive. Jesus is our Savior. So we get the understanding and knowledge of how to make it into heaven through the straight path to righteousness and truth. We need to hear the gospel message each and every time he speaks to us, we need to know what it's all about to stay in touch with our Heavenly Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we may be able to walk the straight paths of righteousness and truth. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Mother Rosie. Thank you, Sister Madeline. Uh, this is Sister Trish. Yes, Sister Trish. I did a two, I did on both what Mother Rosie and Sister Madeline said, but for my um all that. And then I, I add on to that is my personal relationship that I have with Jesus Christ, and I can share my experience with that person and pray that they can believe and that they, they can receive what you know the same thing I had. That's my that's what I would tell them. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Sister Trish. Is there anybody else that would like to share? Yes, good evening. This is Deacon Costa. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would say that it is the um, the birth 
the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But I also would like to add that it, it is about salvation um, and just the whole, because his whole life is about the remission of our sins and us being saved from, um, if I can say it like this, going to hell. Um, because we love Christ, we love God. So he, so he's bringing, he's bringing, he's bringing the good news of, of salvation to us. And that would be my my explanation of it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you, Deacon. Y'all, all of those answers are on point. And kind of what I want to do, and, and I know that I might not have time to hit every single point here, but I'm going to do my best. But the gospel message stems from way back in the book of Genesis, when Adam disobeyed God and sinned. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And God had told Adam that if he were to disobey, that the penalty would amount to death. Well, a perfect man, Adam was perfect before he sinned. A perfect man sinned, and a perfect man had to pay the penalty of sin that the rest of us would have the possibility of an eternal relationship with the true and living God. And that that's where the story started. But see, the gospel message starts off where where Jesus gave the message to the disciples. And in Matthew 28 and 19, he tells them to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever he had done throughout his ministry. He wanted them to share with the world about his ministry. But see, the first thing we have to understand in the gospel message is that every man, woman, child, since the creation of Adam and Adam's fall, is a sinner. Basically mean that, meaning that there is a separation between you and God and that there's no amount of anything that you could do on your own to ever uh, 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 cross that gap that separates you between God and man. And that the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the man the embodiment of God in the flesh that was sacrificed on our behalf, that through him we would be able to cross that gap and have a relationship with God. But see, the first thing you have to understand is that no matter who you are, and there's people of all walks of life, the rich, the poor, the, the famous, the not so famous, any class that you want to categorize, every person is a sinner. That's where it starts off at. You have to acknowledge that when you're coming to God and that by that you need a savior. Jesus Christ is that Savior. The next thing is that you need to acknowledge 
that Jesus was born of a virgin birth. And in my studies, I tried to, to bring Old Testament and New Testament to show you. And there's many scriptures that are in the Bible. I just picked a few. So, you know, if, if you have another scripture that you're familiar with, you know, by all means, utilize that. But what I came up with was Isaiah 7 and 14. The prophet Isaiah talks about the virgin birth. That a virgin should bear a son and his name would be called Emmanuel. And then if you fast forward into the book of Matthew 1 and 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That's the second thing. One, you're a sinner. Two, Jesus came by virgin birth. Next, you have to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. He's not just a mere man. He was God's Son, incarnated in flesh that dwelt among men, performing all manners of miracles, wonders, and signs, that he was God in the flesh. Psalms 2 and 7 says, I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Matthew 17 and 5 talks about when the Lord Jesus was on the Transfiguration Mount and the Father spoke to him and the disciples and told them that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Just to clarify and give great understanding that he is the son of the true and the living God. And the next point was that Jesus is the sacrificial lamb. You'd have to go all the way back to the book of Exodus when God is delivering the people of Israel from the Egyptians, and he instituted the Passover, Jesus is that lamb, the lamb that was slain. His blood was applied to the doorposts, that when the death angel comes, that he will pass over you. Because he sees the blood of the lamb. Because, see, we can't be saved in and of ourselves. It is only because of the crucifixion and sacrifice of the Lord Jesus that we have opportunity of a relationship with the Father and eternal life. 53 and 7 says, He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears. Is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. John 1 29 says, And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus was the Lamb that was sacrificed 
for our sins. Then we have to understand that in this sacrifice, there was shedding of blood for our sins. For the Bible says that there is no remission of sin unless there is shedding of blood. Leviticus 17 and 11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. 1 John 1 and 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. It is the blood that washes us and cleanses us and makes us whiter than snow. But there is no atonement without the blood. There is no forgiveness of sin without the blood. And one might say, well, did Jesus have to die? Couldn't he have just shed his blood and that would have been enough? No, because see, the Bible says that the penalty of sin is death. And the curse of death was placed upon all humanity. And the only way that that curse could be overcome is that Jesus had to die, not only shed his blood, but he had to die to pay the penalty. Because unless the debt was paid, there would be no hope of salvation for any of us. Jesus had to die. Genesis 2 and 17 says, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. 1 Corinthians 15, 21 says, For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. And see, that's a very important scripture because, see, unless Jesus could overcome death, how could he promise us eternal life? He had to be able to defeat death. He had to die and then get up again. Because see, shedding of blood wasn't enough. He had to physically die. Proved that he was God and that he had the power to reclaim his life and get up out of the grave. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. See, he couldn't offer us life if he couldn't rescue his own life from death. Then Jesus, after he died, he had to be buried. And Isaiah 53 and 9 gives us reference to this. And it says, and he made his grave with the wicked. Jesus didn't commit any sin. He was not a wicked person. But his grave was with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. 
John 19 and 41 and 42 says, now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus because of the Jews preparation day for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Now we talk about the resurrection, the importance of the resurrection. To me, the resurrection is the greatest miracle, greatest event, because without the resurrection, we would have no eternal hope of eternal life. Because as I said earlier, if Jesus could not get up out of the grave, how can he promise us eternal life if he couldn't secure it for himself? We would just be having a belief in Jesus with no hope after we're dead. But it is this eternal hope through Jesus Christ that as he got up, he opened the door that would allow us to enter in. Psalm 16, 10 and 11 says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, talking about Jesus, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Then John eleven twenty five 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, Though he were dead, yet shall he live. If you believe in Jesus, you have accepted him as your Lord and your Savior. His promise is that you will have eternal life with him. For he says, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? See, we have to understand the, the foundation, the making of the gospel message. If we're going to share it with somebody else, that they would fully understand what Jesus did for each of us. And that there is no other way, no other name given amongst men, whereby we might be saved. It is only by the name of Christ that we have salvation. No other name, only Jesus. For the Bible says that he has been given all power in heaven and in earth are all subject to him. Psalms 29 and 4 says, The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Matthew 28 and 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He is all-powerful. He is God. He is the creator. He is the one who was manifested in the flesh and walked amongst men. Yet he took on the position of a lowly servant in the form of man, clothed in flesh, and took upon him the robe of sin for each and every one of us that we would not have to suffer 
the judgment for sin, that we would have an opportunity to have that eternal relationship with him and not suffer the consequences of sin. But he has all power. Death could not keep him in the grave. Hell could not withhold the keys to life, death, and the grave. He has all of them. He has all power. Then the ascension. Because see, after he rose from the dead, he walked amongst men some 40 days, showing himself to be very much alive. Then he ascended back into heaven. Psalms 24 and 7 says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The king of glory shall come in. 1 Peter 3 and 22. Who was gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, even as we speak here tonight, waiting for the Father to give him the word that it's time to come back. See, there's a promise. Not only did he go away, but see, he made the promise that, you know, I, I'm going away, but I'm going to go and prepare a mansion for each of you. And he promised that he would come back, gather us up, and take us with him. That is his eternal promise. Isaiah 48 and 11 says, I will rescue you for my sake. Yes, for my own sake. I will not let my reputation be tarnished. I will not share my glory with angels. See, God is doing it because of his namesake. He is God Almighty. He created us. And the enemy would say, well, he created them, but he couldn't save them. And God is saying that he is and has, through the Lord Jesus Christ, rescued us from eternal damnation. And he is coming back to take up his church and take us back with him. First Thessalonians 4 and 13 puts it this way. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, which, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Jesus is coming back to gather his church, to take them with him. Even those who have passed on, he's going to gather them up along with those that are living at the present when he comes. We shall all be caught up together with him. That is the eternal hope. That is the eternal promise. But to sum it up, 1 Peter 3 and 18 says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And then one scripture that we all know so well, for for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus came to pay the sin debt that we could not pay. And he had to do that by sacrificing his own body, shedding his own blood, giving up his own life, allowing himself to be placed in the grave, to lie there for three days. Then on that faithful third day, he got up, reclaimed his life. For he said, even though I, I lay my life down, no man take it from me. He said, I lay it down and I'll pick it back up. Which is what he did on that third day. He got up out of the grave. Showed himself alive and well for some 40 days to over some 500 disciples and different ones that saw him ministering and teaching and, and, and interacting amongst them before his ascension into heaven. And then he gave us in Matthew 24 is one book that tells us of his coming, which we talked about this past Sunday. Signs and wonders and all the things that were going to happen. That when we start to see these things, we would know that the time is drawing close. As the Bible said that we would see these things and then we would understand and we would look up. Because our redemption draws closer, very close with everything that's going on. But as we get opportunity to share either with loved ones or others, we need to have an understanding of the gospel message. You might not have all of the scriptures, but you still should have an understanding of what the gospel message entails. The virgin birth, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the atonement of our sins, <laughs> and that through him, we would have the gift of eternal life if we have faith and believe in him as the true and living son of God that came and walked the earth and died for me and you. 
I didn't know if I would get through all of it, but I think I did pretty much. But, you know, we've got a couple minutes. I want to take the time to open it up. If anybody has a thought or a comment about the gospel message, maybe there might be something that I might have left out and you want to add to. Anybody have a thought or comment? I think our pastors are on the line. Pastor, if you would like to share anything. Or anybody else? I'm just going to. Unmute, and you can just unmute yourselves if you'd like to share anything. God bless you. God bless you. you. We hear you. Yeah. God bless you, uh, Pastor Harry. Uh, what a one of the powerful methods that ever could be taught. And when you're talking about the gospel, you, you, you brought us out so plain and so, and so pure that we should be able to understand but Dr. Birth, the death and the burial and the resurrection, we wouldn't have no hope. I mean, you, you, I don't wanna, you, 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 you brought it so plain to, to us and, and see it's, it's hard for us to, and like you was in your teaching tonight, how can we uh, uh, explain or uh, teach or lead someone uh, if we don't know about the about the, the the death, why he died for us, and and and, and, and why they put him in a in a borrowed tomb, and, and and when he rose, see sometimes we sometimes we may feel like uh, they say how can this man say he gonna turn down the temple in three days, build it back, restore it in three days. They didn't understand. They didn't really know understood and know what Jesus was saying. Sometimes we like that, but 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 we got to see the reason we got to be see. That's why it's so important that when we be when when you said earlier when we repent of our sin, he said repent and be baptized. Don't be baptized. Be repent of your sin. And be baptized. Mm -hmm. Then we go down. Then we go down into the barrel with him. And when we come up, we ride with him the same way he said when he came. His father had given him all power, heaven and earth. Hey, I thank and praise God for you tonight on on how you uh, broke that down and so plain that uh, we should all be able to understand. But guess what? But if 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 we had if we had been buried with him, then we'll never rise with him. If we if we if we been buried with him, see when he 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 paid the price. You said it earlier. He paid the price for the sins of the whole world. He ain't never sinned. Why we, why why did he have to pay the price for my sin? Why? Because he knew that I couldn't and you couldn't. And we couldn't pay the price for the sin that we committed, but he paid the price. The 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 the, 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 the lamb, he was the ultimate lamb, the perfect lamb that that, that died for our sin, y'all. So we, we we got to be able to share that good news. The gospel is the good news of Christ, his burial, his death, and his resurrection. So see, if he hadn't died, then uh, there wouldn't be no grave, even death. Say, watch this. I don't want. I don't want to do. I mean, you, 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 you taught it so well, but, but, but you know, there was a conversation going on with with, with time, death, and the grave. They, 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 they plotted one day and say and told time, if you catch up with him. Death say I'll kill him. And death, death say, if you catch him time, I'll kill him. And Gray say, death, 
if you kill him, I hold him. See, the grave hold Jesus. I'm gonna leave that alone because Pastor Harry, hey man, bless God bless you. God bless you, man. You 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 bless my soul tonight. No one letting us know tonight that hey, we got to know uh the reason. We got to know if he died, he died for a reason. He died, he had a purpose for coming here to die. He he knew what kind of shape we was in. Do we really know what kind of shape we was in? Or do we really know what kind of shape we're in right now? And without him, we are still dead. We are still spiritually dead. I like how you broke that down. Even Adam, and he, he told him, in the Garden of Eden, do whatever you want to do, but don't touch the tree of knowledge, which is good of you. And then he told him, the day that you do eat of it, you will surely die. And I think I heard you say, that's why we are all similar. We were born into sin. Like you said earlier, Adam was a, a perfect man in the garden. But by being disobedient, everybody on this line tonight, you, you know you've been disobedient. You know you've been disobedient. You've been disobedient. And any time we disobedient to God, we, we just like Adam, we are being separated from God. And that's why, that's why when, when he punched Adam, that's why the sweat on his brow, he, he had to work and till the ground now. He had a garden of a planet that he didn't have to work. Just just go tend to it. Women, when you have child, that child, that's why you have so much pain to remind you of what Eve did. So we all are guilty, y'all. And ain't you glad that God, God's son, his only begotten son, that came down through 42 generations and to a hill called Calvary, took those 39 scrapes for you and I, that we, he said, by his scrape, we are healed. Hey, we only heal by his scrape once we accept him as our Lord and, and Savior. He, no scrapes he took ain't for us if we still work for the devil. No scrapes are for those who have repented and come godless sorrow and, and have God, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior, and we are being obedient, faithful until the end, until he come back. He, Pastor Harry, you said he was coming back. We all know he's coming back, but guess what? Don't none of us know when. That's why he said, be ready, because I'm coming out like a thief in the night. No man know the hour. No man. Scientists don't can't tell you. No, the wife, can't nobody tell you the hour of the day he's going to appear. So that's what we got to be ready. Hey, man, I, I thank you. Praise God for you. I, I, I felt you. I felt you. I felt you, man. I felt you deep in the in your teaching tonight. I, I felt the uh, I felt the breakthrough uh, in your teaching tonight. And I pray, God, that God will continue to, to, to give you this kind of knowledge and wisdom and understanding to, to break such a powerful message when you're talking about the gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection. That's something we all have to know uh, of why we do what we do, because he died for us. How are we going to have a, a, a life, the tree of life, and have it more abundant? If he hadn't died, he wouldn't have been able to rose. And if he wouldn't rose from the grave, then guess what? He wouldn't have all power. Heaven and earth in his hand, not some power, not NWAC power, white power, black power, but all power. That's why he said all power. Just like he said, we all have sinned and we all have come short of the glory. Right. But thanks be to God, we have a savior, y'all. Hey, uh, Ella, thank you, Pastor Harry. Man, I thank him and praise God for you tonight, for allowing God to use you and give you such a powerful message that you have brought tonight. Uh, that's one of the, the best messages that ever can be preached is the gospel, the death, burial, and the resurrection. And like you said, it's a lot of scripture. It's a lot of stuff we don't know. But how we going to know if we don't get in the word? How we going to know if we don't get in the word? And then he said this, how can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he be sent? So we got to get in that word, y'all. We got to get in that word. We got to get deeper in that word that God will give us the understanding of what the real gospel means to us. And as you broke it down tonight. That should give us a start to go back down and say, look, I want to do, do I want to know a little bit more. And you said, Pastor Harry, that there was more scripture. Search them. 
find them, read them. That's God to give you an understanding of it because you know, we're living in the last day and we need to know. Oh my God, we need to know. That's right. He ain't just coming back for he ain't just coming back for anybody. He coming back for those who have surrendered themselves to Christ and faithful until the end. I'm gonna leave that alone right there. Well, you gave me something to teach you on next time. I praise God for you. May God continue to bless you. And may God continue to strengthen you and give you such message that we have given you tonight. And I thank God for your your for your obedience to stand bold and teach that word tonight. May God bless you. May He keep you. May He elevate you. And may He keep empowering you and equipping you to be able to teach these type of messages as you taught tonight. God bless you. Great light. We love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. I mean, there's just so much really that can be said about this. And uh, there's several scriptures and passages that give us understanding. And the ones that I chose are just a few. Uh, I believe Deacon Colston or Evangelist was going to uh, come on. I saw your mic unmuted. Do you want to share something at this time? Yeah, thank you for that message. Um, I was just sitting here thinking, it's like, you know, um, it's one of the pillars of what we believe in. Um, if we really don't understand it for ourselves and we're really not convicted in what we believe in, then how can you tell someone else? Um, if you can't, because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to, explain a virgin birth it's hard to explain and really to understand the life of christ it's it's hard to understand his death it's hard to understand his resurrection if you're outside of christ and and like deacon wolf said you have to read the scriptures to find out to get the truth and the understanding because you know god's not going to have you ignorant no nope, he's not but he's it, not. it was you know it's just i just got this picture of just two pillars and it was like that was one pillar and the pillar and the other pillar was just really knowing the scriptures searching the scriptures out for yourself because that's when god is just talking to you he's just revealing his word to you his word is 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 jesus and he just he wants you to know he just wants you to know. I just thank you for that message. Amen. Amen. I mean, I mean, it's no different than uh, a person that's looking for directions, say, say a street address or a home. And, you know, you know where they live, but you can't give them directions as to how to get there. That's the message of the gospels. We're giving them directions on how to get to heaven, which is through Jesus Christ. I'll just yeah, feel. Oh, go ahead, Deacon Coast. Yeah, no, I just wanted to to add on. You know, if you listen, or if you know any little bit about any other religion, you know, rather whatever it is, they are convicted on what they believe in, whether we agree with them or not. They are convicted, mm -hmm. so we should we should be the same. We, we, we should, should have we, even we, more conviction. Yes, because we're we're serving the living God. So we should right. have the same conviction, if not more. That's right. That's right. Because we know the truth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Elder Stubblefield. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Thank you, um, Deacon Wolf and Deacon Colston. You know, this, this subject is um, of utmost importance. And um, um, from what I caught of the, the message tonight, um, you know, it's just, it's one of those, those things that make you reflect. And the first thing that came to my mind is that I owe everything to him. I owe God everything. 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 Because... Um, I like the way Deacon Wolf put that. He said, why should Jesus had to, to die for my sins? 
And when we really think about that, that is beyond our comprehension. And um, it is um, a very interesting insight to think about that the whole world has a belief system. Now, of course, our belief system is rooted in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, Christianity, the Lord came into the world out of heaven through a virgin, lived without sin, took the punishment, died, and got up three days later. As you, as you brought out in your message tonight, that is unfathomable. I mean, we 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 understand it from the perspective that we we make sense of it through faith. It is our faith that really makes this pliable in our mind. And the the thing about it is those that would not receive him or do not receive him or refuse to receive him they re they're 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 hooked on something you know there there's there's no uh middle ground here is is um it's either right left hot cold up down that it's just one or the other and so I think that one thing that we as Christians can can do, and I'm not I'm not glorifying any other religion or any other thing that is not of God, but what's fascinating is that their loyalty to the lie, if it's not rooted in Jesus Christ, the Lord God of heaven then it is not truth. But there are millions of people that are following not truths. <laughs> and so, and but then sometimes when we look at the church and we, we think about how sometimes the church um, seems on the surface to lose power when certain things come about. And, you know, the Bible talks about the great falling away. And, um, and that's one thing that, that I have been curious about over the years is how, how could there be a big, great falling away? What would happen or what would be the thing that would cause the love of many to wax cold as the Bible tells us? And so I just wanna make sure that I'm not, um, one of those who grows and wax cold, God forbid. Because what God did for me, I mean, I mean, there's there's nothing I can do, or we can do, to repay Him. Absolutely nothing. And that's why when He said we're saved by grace through faith, and not of works, lest any man should boast. Nobody can say they took themselves to heaven. But the ironic thing is we may take ourselves to hell <laughs> because we uh, choose those things that would um, separate us from God. But thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you um, for, for bringing this kind of message. And I just, I felt compelled in my, in my spirit. Um, I felt God unction me to, to talk even in, um, I got two unctions um, to talk even though I came on extremely late uh, got on late but I could not let this moment go without um, heeding God's request to respond to that word amen so thank you pastor um, amen I also acknowledge pastor Elijah as well in this Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Stubblefield. You know, we just have to acknowledge that, like you said, 
the Lord Jesus has done so much for each of us that there's nothing we could ever do to repay that. But see, Jesus is not asking for us to repay him because he knows we can't. But what he does ask is, is one that we repent of our sins, that we believe in him and tell somebody else. That's all he asks of us. Because he says, I've done the hard work. Mm -hmm. I suffered on the cross. I took the nails in my hands and my feet. I took the stripes on my back. I allowed my, my, my side to be pierced. See, he went through all of that. So mm. we wouldn't have to. But he just says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Pick up your cross and follow me. That's all he asked us to do. And, you know, that's part of the gospel message. I want to give space to, you know, anybody else, if you have something you'd like to share before we turn it back over to Sister Madeline for prayer. Anybody? Praise the Lord, sir. Praise the Lord, Pastor. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, I had to. I had to find a place. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate right, you, Elder Stubblefield. I appreciate everybody that uh, that's on tonight, and and everyone, uh, Deacon, both Deacon uh, Wolf and uh, Colson for their response. And uh, you know, when you when you find salvation, and you think of you know what it made me think of because there's so much into the that comes into play when you talk about the gospel message and the message and the way you brought it like deacon wolf was saying and even everybody that has had a response tonight is that the ultimate sacrifice the ultimate example of true unconditional love to give your life when you have the, the uncomparable power to change the immediate circumstance before you even, you know, even in knowing that the, the resurrection was at hand because he had to know. D to choose to lay down your life and pay the ultimate sacrifice for the world, not like, like uh, Elder Stubblefield said, there's millions of people that are following untruths. You know, I spoke to someone and they were talking about how they grew up Muslim and, and how, how their, when they found God about 20 years ago, how their family for about five to seven years kind of ostracized and put them to the side because they didn't continue what, what they were brought in and what seed had grown them to that point. And they said one, one thing that, that stood out the most was how they decided to stay with Jesus because they believed it was the truth. <laughs> Even though their family, you know, the sacrifice in any case, when you choose salvation or to walk with Jesus or to believe that he is the risen one, you have to understand that the, there is going to be sacrifice. There is going to be challenge there's going to be adversity there's i mean could you imagine all the things that he went through in his the human side of of him to be that sacrificial lamb to 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 bear the cross like like pastor just said to have his side pierced to have the crown of thorns to have his his feet overlapped and nailed into the cross before they dropped it in the ground i mean and the weight, not only his physical man weight, but the weight of the world. I mean, you have to understand, we have chosen to follow Christ. And the, the ultimate sacrifice has been paid. 
And if we have to understand that it's not just in our day-to-day -day things or the way that, that, that challenges happen, adversity finds us, whatever, as long as we continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand, then we have, like Pastor said a couple times, the, uh, the ability to experience eternal life because he has gone ahead of us to prepare a place for each and every one of us that stay true to the true and living God. Now, I don't want to take too much time, but it was that. That was a heavy one. And the way you brought it out <laughs> was so plain and so to the point. Every scripture had had a point and, a, and an intersection to making it, you know, to where you don't, you, you can't get lost. If you, if, if you didn't, weren't able to follow along, then, then I would suggest, as we always do, that we go back and listen to it because there's so much in there to help each and every one of us in our own capacity to understand and gain knowledge as to what the gospel message is and what it means to us today because we serve a true, the true and living God. And I just thank you for the message, Patrick. I pray that God will replenish you and like Deacon Wolfsack continue to, to bless you to bring, to bring the word like you brought it tonight. And it only gets better. Amen. God bless Amen. you, sir. God Amen. bless you. Amen. God Thank bless you. you. That was awesome. Yeah, we, we give God the glory, but, you know, we all need to, to know the basics of the gospel message so that way we'll be able to share it with That's somebody right. if we're ever asked, right? You know, Amen why do you believe in Jesus? Who is yeah. Jesus? What right. did he do? You know, all of those yeah. questions that could come about. And even if you can't put your finger on the scripture at that particular time, you should have enough knowledge of the message to be able to tell them what right. the message is. And that just like, you know, the, these other religions, as, as you mentioned, and Elder Stubblefield mentioned, they have that, and Deacon Colson, they have that conviction about them that, you know, they, they go to all kinds of extremes and fanaticisms because of what they believe in. But yeah. we should have even more so because we know the truth. Yeah, we know the truth. We know we're the living truth. the truth. We're Hallelujah. living the truth. And 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 we should be able to share that with somebody. But it's important, as Deacon Wolf said, that we need to get into our word, read the word, search out the scriptures, and even the scriptures that you know God gave me to bring out. There are more than that. Uh, there are many scriptures from Genesis to Revelations that, you know, it all talks about Jesus from, from, from Genesis through Revelations. It's all about him. It's his story. And that's all we're doing is sharing his story. Awesome. Amen. But, you know, I just thank God for the opportunity to be used tonight to be able to deliver the message. I pray that everybody got something out of it. And that, as uh, Pastor said, you know, as an encouragement, take the time, go back, listen to it again. Maybe you can gather the scriptures if you didn't get them all written down, uh, replay it, and you can listen to them again. And, and we'll have it up on the website or the YouTube probably later this week, and you'll be able to uh, listen to it. But at this time, I'm going to transition and give it back over to Sister Madeline.